When these shelter workers notice something strange on the security camera, they begin to pay close attention. What they notice leaves them screaming in horror. The fluorescent lights buzzed overhead, casting a sterile glow on the rows of cages at the Alberta Animal Shelter. Sarah's eyes drifted across the security camera monitors, each screen showing a different part of the shelter. She had grown accustomed to the predictable rhythm of the night shifts, feeding, cleaning, and making sure the animals were safe and comfortable. But tonight, something was different. On one of the monitors, she noticed movement that didn't quite fit the usual pattern. Maggie, a recently abandoned mother dog, who'd arrived at the shelter just a few weeks ago, was pacing restlessly in her enclosure. Maggie was a medium-sized dog with soft brown fur and eyes that seemed to hold an ocean of sadness. She'd come to the shelter pregnant and terrified, and though the staff had cared for her with the utmost kindness, her spirit had been broken by the ordeal. Maggie's puppies had been adopted as soon as they were weaned, leaving her alone in the cold, sterile cage. Sarah's heart ached as she watched Maggie on the screen. The dog had spent every night since the puppies left pacing her cage, a restless energy driving her to move in tight circles, as if searching for something or someone she'd lost. Tonight, however, her pacing seemed different, more frantic, as if something was compelling her to act. Suddenly, Maggie stopped, her head snapping toward the corner of her enclosure. Sarah leaned forward, her brow furrowed in concern. Maggie began to sniff around the edges of the cage, her nose pressed against the cold metal bars. Then, in a swift and unexpected movement, she squeezed her body through a narrow gap meant for food deliveries. Sarah gasped and screamed in horror, her eyes widening in disbelief. Maggie wasn't supposed to be able to escape. The gap was too small, barely wide enough for a dog of Maggie's size. Yet there she was, slipping through with a surprising agility, her body contorting as she forced herself into the aisle. Sarah quickly scanned the other monitors, tracking Maggie's movements as the dog padded down the row of cages, her steps purposeful and quick. Where is she going? Sarah muttered to herself, her heart pounding as she watched Maggie's strange behavior on the security camera. The dog moved with determination, ignoring the other animals in their enclosures, her focus fixed on a specific destination. Sarah's breath caught in her throat as Maggie stopped in front of the cage labeled New Arrivals. The door to the shelter's main hallway swung open, and Sarah rushed through, her keys jangling in her hand. The shelter was eerily silent, save for the soft padding of Maggie's paws against the linoleum floor. The night air hung heavy with the scent of disinfectant, a sharp contrast to the warmth of the animals housed within. Sarah's mind raced as she approached the new arrival section. This area of the shelter was reserved for animals that had just been brought in, often scared and confused by their sudden change of circumstances. Tonight, two tiny puppies, no more than a few hours old, had been placed there after being found abandoned in a nearby park. They were too young to be without their mother, and Sarah had spent the better part of the evening worrying about their fragile condition. Maggie was now standing in front of the enclosure, her nose pressed against the bars. Her body trembled with tension, her eyes locked on the small bundle of fur inside the cage. Sarah's heart pounded as she approached, unsure of what she was about to witness. Maggie? Sarah called softly, trying to keep her voice calm despite the adrenaline surging through her veins. The dog didn't respond. She was too focused on the tiny whimpers coming from within the enclosure. Sarah stepped closer, her hand tightening around the keys. She could hear the faint cries of the puppies, their high-pitched whines echoing through the stillness of the shelter. Maggie let out a soft whine, a sound so filled with longing that it sent a shiver down Sarah's spine. The dog had managed to escape her own enclosure, driven by an instinct that Sarah couldn't yet understand. Possible to the bars, her nose nuzzling the tiny gap between them, but the bars were too close together. Maggie was trapped, unable to reach the puppies that had clearly become the focus of her attention. Sarah hesitated for a moment, her mind racing with possibilities. Why was Maggie so fixated on these puppies? What was driving her to act with such urgency? But as she looked into Maggie's eyes, she saw a pain and a need that were impossible to ignore. With trembling hands, Sarah unlocked the enclosure and slowly opened the door. Maggie lifted her head, her eyes pleading as she waited for Sarah to give her permission. Sarah stepped back and Maggie moved carefully into the enclosure, her movements slow and deliberate, as if she knew just how fragile the puppies were.
Maggie sniffed the tiny, shivering pups, her nose brushing against their small bodies. The puppies whimpered softly, their tiny paws stretching out toward the warmth of her breath. Maggie let out another low whine, a sound that seemed to reverberate through the entire room. Then, with the gentlest of touches, she began to nuzzle the puppies, licking their fur and drawing them close to her body. Sarah watched, tears welling up in her eyes, as she witnessed the tender scene unfold. Maggie, who'd been so lost and heartbroken after losing her own puppies, had found a new purpose, a new family. The sight was both beautiful and heartbreaking, a reminder of the powerful bonds that exist between animals, even in the most difficult circumstances. There's no other people's children. Sarah whispered to herself, wiping away a tear as she watched Maggie settle in with the puppies. Only love. By the time the morning shift arrived at the Alberta Animal Shelter, word had already spread about Maggie's extraordinary actions. The shelter staff gathered around the new arrival's enclosure, whispering in hushed tones as they watched Maggie curled up with the two tiny puppies, her body a protective barrier against the cold. Sarah stood off to the side, still processing the events of the night before. The image of Maggie slipping through the narrow gap in her enclosure played over and over in her mind. She'd never seen anything like it, a dog so determined, so driven by maternal instinct, that she defied all expectations to care for two orphaned puppies. As the staff discussed what had happened, the shelter's director, a tall, stern woman named Diane, approached the group. She'd been informed of the situation early that morning and had come to see it for herself. So this is the famous Maggie, Diane said, her voice softening as she knelt beside the enclosure. Maggie lifted her head, her eyes meeting Diane's with a calm, steady gaze. Yes, Sarah replied, stepping forward. She, she just knew. Somehow she knew those puppies needed her. Diane nodded, her expression thoughtful. Animals have instincts we can't always understand. But what Maggie did, it's remarkable. She's taken on the role of a mother, even after everything she's been through. The staff continued to observe Maggie and the puppies throughout the day, marveling at the bond that had formed between them. Maggie was attentive and gentle, never leaving the puppy's side, her eyes constantly scanning the room as if to ensure their safety. The puppies, in turn, seemed to have found comfort in Maggie's presence, their small bodies snuggling against her warmth. The shelter staff began to talk about Maggie's future. There was no question that she had proven herself to be an exceptional dog, with a heart full of love despite the hardships that she'd faced. The puppies, too, would need special care and attention as they grew. The idea of keeping the three together began to take hold, with the hope that they could be adopted as a family. But as the day wore on, the shelter received an unexpected call that would change everything. It was late in the afternoon when the phone rang at the front desk. Sarah, who was finishing up her shift, answered the call. On the other end was a woman who identified herself as Mrs. Benson, claiming to be the original owner of Maggie. Sarah's heart sank as she listened to the woman's story. According to Mrs. Benson, Maggie had been stolen from her property months ago, and she'd been searching for her ever since. When she heard about the dog at the Alberta Animal Shelter, she was certain it was Maggie. I need to get her back, Mrs. Benson insisted, her voice growing more agitated with each passing moment. She's my dog. Sarah felt a knot form in her stomach. She knew how attached Maggie had become to the puppies, and the thought of separating them was almost unbearable. But Mrs. Benson was adamant, and she had the legal right to reclaim her dog. I understand, Sarah replied, trying to keep her voice steady. But I need to discuss this with the shelter director. Please hold on. Sarah placed the call on hold and quickly made her way to Diane's office. She explained the situation, her heart heavy with dread. Diane listened intently, her expression unreadable. This complicates things, Diane finally said, leaning back in her chair. If Mrs. Benson has proof of ownership, we can't deny her request, but I can't imagine what this will do to Maggie and the puppies. The two women sat in silence for a moment, each grappling with the difficult decision ahead. Diane knew they had no choice but to follow the law, but the thought of tearing Maggie away from the puppies felt like a cruel injustice. We'll need to arrange for Mrs. Benson to come in and identify Maggie, Diane said at last, but we should prepare ourselves for the worst. Sarah nodded, her heart sinking. 
she knew Maggie's world was about to be turned upside down once again. The following day, Mrs. Benson arrived at the shelter. She was an older woman with sharp eyes and a no-nonsense demeanor. Sarah met her at the entrance trying to mask her anxiety with a polite smile. Thank you for coming, Sarah said, leading Mrs. Benson to the new arrivals area. Maggie is just through here. As they approached the enclosure, Maggie was lying with the puppies, her body curled protectively around them. She looked up as Sarah and Mrs. Benson entered the room, her eyes wary. Mrs. Benson's face softened as she saw Maggie. Maggie, it's really you, she whispered, her hand trembling as she reached out to touch the dog. But Maggie didn't respond. She stayed where she was, her eyes flickering between Mrs. Benson and the puppies at her side. The air in the room grew tense, and Sarah could feel the weight of the situation pressing down on all of them. Mrs. Benson frowned, her hand dropping to her side. Why isn't she coming to me? Sarah swallowed hard. Maggie has been through a lot, she said carefully. She is bonded with these puppies. They've become her family. Mrs. Benson's expression hardened. Those aren't her puppies. Maggie belongs with me. I want to take her home. The words hung in the air like a dark cloud. Sarah's mind raced, searching for a way to protect Maggie and her puppies. She knew the shelter had no legal grounds to keep Maggie from her rightful owner, but she also knew that tearing her away from the puppies would break Maggie's heart. Mrs. Benson, Sarah began, choosing her words carefully. Maggie has been through a traumatic experience. She's found comfort in caring for these puppies, and separating them now could have serious consequences for her well-being. Mrs. Benson's eyes narrowed. Are you telling me I can't take my dog home? No, that's, that's not what I'm saying, Sarah replied quickly. I'm asking if you'd consider allowing Maggie to stay with the puppies for a little while longer, just until they're old enough to be adopted. After that, you could take her home and she'll be more adjusted to the change. Mrs. Benson seemed to consider this for a moment, but then she shook her head. I've waited long enough. I'm taking her home today. Sarah's heart sank. She knew there was nothing more she could do. She glanced at Diane, who had been standing silently in the corner, her expression somber. Let's give Maggie some time to say goodbye, Diane finally said, her voice gentle but firm. Mrs. Benson opened her mouth to protest, but the look in Diane's eyes silenced her. With a reluctant nod, she stepped back, allowing Sarah and Diane to approach the enclosure. Sarah knelt beside Maggie, her heart breaking as she looked into the dog's eyes. I'm so sorry, Maggie, she whispered, her voice choked with emotion. I wish things could be different. Maggie seemed to understand. She nuzzled the puppies one last time, licking their faces with a tenderness that brought tears to Sarah's eyes. Then, with a resigned sigh, Maggie stood up and stepped away from the puppies, her head hanging low. Sarah opened the enclosure door, and Maggie walked out, her movements slow and heavy. Mrs. Benson took hold of Maggie's leash, her expression unreadable. Without another word, she turned and walked away, Maggie following obediently at her side. Sarah watched them go, her heart heavy with sorrow. She knew she'd done everything she could, but it didn't make the loss any easier to bear. The shelter felt emptier after Maggie's departure. The staff tried to carry on as usual, but the mood was somber, the memory of Maggie's last moments with the puppies weighing heavily on everyone's minds. Sarah threw herself into her work, caring for the other animals and trying to keep her thoughts from drifting back to Maggie. But every time she passed the new arrivals enclosure, she felt a pang of guilt and sadness. The puppies were still there, tiny and vulnerable, but they no longer had the warmth and protection of a mother to care for them. A week passed by and the puppies began to grow, their eyes opening and their tiny legs growing stronger. But despite their progress, there was a noticeable change in their behavior. They were restless, often whining and searching for something or someone that wasn't there. It wasn't until a few days later that Sarah received a call that changed everything. The voice on the other end of the line was familiar, though it sounded hesitant and uncertain. Sarah, this is Mrs. Benson, the voice said. I, uh, I need to talk with you about Maggie. Sarah's heart skipped a beat. Is everything okay? She asked, her mind racing with possibilities. There was a pause on the other end of the line before Mrs. Benson spoke again, her voice tinged with regret. <laughs> 
Maggie hasn't been the same since I brought her home. She's withdrawn. She doesn't eat much and she barely interacts with anyone. I think... I think she's grieving. Sarah's chest tightened with empathy. She'd feared this might happen, but hearing it confirmed was no easier. I've been thinking, Mrs. Benson continued, her voice softer now. Maybe... maybe Maggie belongs with those puppies. She was happy with them, wasn't she? She was, Sarah replied, her voice thick with emotion. She was a wonderful mother to them. There was another pause, and when Mrs. Benson spoke again, her voice was resolute. I'm bringing her back. She deserves to be with them. Sarah's heart leapt with hope. Thank you, she said, her voice trembling with gratitude. Thank you so much. The following day, Mrs. Benson arrived at the shelter with Maggie in tow. The dog's eyes were dull, her body language subdued, as if she'd lost the will to engage with the world around her. But as soon as they entered the shelter, something shifted in Maggie. Her ears perked up and her nose began to twitch as she caught a familiar scent. Sarah met them at the entrance, her heart pounding with anticipation. Let's take her to see the puppies, she said, leading Mrs. Benson to the new arrivals area. As they approached the enclosure, Maggie's pace quickened, her tail beginning to wag for the first time in weeks. The moment they reached the door, Maggie pressed her nose against the bars, letting out a soft whine of recognition. Sarah unlocked the door and stepped back, allowing Maggie to enter. The puppies, now a couple weeks older, were lying in a corner of the enclosure, their tiny bodies curled up together. But as soon as Maggie entered, they perked up, their eyes widening with recognition. Maggie moved toward them, her tail wagging furiously, and the puppies responded in kind, rushing to her side with excited yips. Maggie nuzzled them, licking their faces and nudging them closer to her warmth. The sight brought tears to Sarah's eyes and even to Mrs. Benson, who stood silently in the doorway, watching the reunion with a mixture of awe and regret. "'I've never seen anything like it,' Mrs. Benson murmured, her voice thick with emotion. "'She's truly a mother to them.' Sarah nodded, her own heart swelling with joy and relief. "'She is,' she agreed softly. "'And they need her just as much as she needs them.' From that day forward, Maggie remained at the shelter with the puppies. As the weeks passed, Maggie flourished. The dullness in her eyes disappeared, replaced by the bright, loving gaze that Sarah remembered. The puppies grew strong and healthy under Maggie's care, their bond with her unbreakable. Once the puppies were weaned, the staff made arrangements to ensure the puppies could stay together, and as word spread about their story, potential adopters expressed interest in taking the two of them as a family. It wasn't long before a kind-hearted couple came forward, eager to give the puppies a loving forever home. And Maggie went back home to her own Mrs. Benson, a much happier dog. What a beautiful story of motherly care. What do you think about other animals playing surrogate to other young? Have you ever seen this in other instances? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Until next time.